I'm going to share with you some of the changes that we made with our front yard here in Florida. Uh, we've lived in this house for over 20 years, and nothing worked. Uh, over the years, we put plants in. Plants died. We took them out. We tried, oh, we tried everything. The grass wouldn't grow because it was too shady. And other things, it was too cold, and they were killed, and so forth and so on. So, we've kind of let nature go its own way. And what you're looking at is a park-like setting, and I'm going to show you how this is done, how we did it. Uh, there are a lot of the original plantings that are still uh, there, such as the jasmine minima that you see right there in the front between the street and the sidewalk. Um, but a lot of it just kind of flows uh, with nature. So when you look, for example, at the um, uh, brick, um, it looks like brick pavers, uh, along the concrete sidewalk there in the front. Uh, those were actually discarded. They were, they were piled up in front of a project. Somebody had made a really beautiful driveway across from the kids' school. So every day, uh, with the permission of the owner, of course, uh, they took the, uh, as much as they could get in the car and brought them home and put them along the concrete uh, driveway and, and walkway to the house and around some of the beds and it really is nice. Um, fencing is, is really great and you don't have to do a fence around everything. We need a gate for the dogs of course and that we had to have installed but notice the plastic flowers here uh, by the front entry and those were found along the road uh, on the way back from the grocery store one day and Jill brought them home and hey they've lasted like five years and then you look at this wonderful broken urn that she found recently and that was lying by the side of the road and she brought it home it weighed a ton and um, the kids could just carry it as far as the bridge out there at the end of the uh, edge of the driveway um, but wow is that a great find and that bridge, of course, was from Sam's and made in China. It started rusting, you know, like mad. And I had to use that epoxy stuff that's so expensive, you know, uh, and, and it all fell out. So I used great stuff. Last um, fall, I just, I just did great stuff, and then I spray painted it black, and <laughs> looks pretty good, huh? I'm really um, kind, of, kind of nostalgic and romantic. Uh, the fencing uh, has been really handy, and you're looking at uh, just this kind of strip along the front. It really doesn't do anything, and I have to be careful backing out of the driveway not to hit the post there at the end. But what really is nice is that it kind of gives a almost a Victorian look. There's something kind of charming about it. And when it starts to rust, you take a, um, a brush you know, a steel brush, and you just brush it, not hard work, and you spray the black, and you're in business again. And that's, I think that's been up for, oh gosh, maybe 15 years. And then over here, you see some of the lawn furniture um, that has decayed. You know, the, the problem with the things that are made in China is that they do rust. Um, the table was aluminum, but the chairs, one's lost an arm there, I've spray painted and try to keep them up, but hey, they look great. And in fact, they look like antiques. So that kind of is charming and a wonderful patina. And then this wonderful uh, outdoor lantern uh, was thrown, literally pitched um, from somebody's house when they were modeling. And it was left out between the sidewalk and the street. And the kids got their wagon and it went down, and they thought that would be kind of cool. So I don't know how they did it, because the concrete was still attached to the base. But we brought that back, and we enjoy that every day. Um, and then another neighbor uh, next to that house uh, gave us, when they moved, a fire hydrant. So we just stuck that in. Funny thing is, <laughs> they're using those colors. It used to be different. I was going to spray paint it red, but I didn't. I left it the way it was. Um, 
But anyway, it's kind of cool. And now we go to the ferns. The ferns, they, they, they kind of are in the category of weeds because in Florida, ferns grow all over the place and people do everything to try to get rid of them. But really, um, they're great because you can weed eat uh, to trim them. They're very easy to trim. And they, let, they don't let weeds grow up through them generally. You see some of the... Um, uh, plants that, that, that we've got um, that come up in the, in the early spring. Um, and then we've got the potted hanging things. But, but, you know, they really are nice. And they'll grow where nothing else does. And so I think the ferns are kind of a good thing. Uh, and the jasmine, the out front there, uh, that, that can be also trimmed with a weed eater, so the weeds do grow up through there, but you just kind of take the weed eater and you kind of cut the whole thing, keep it even, and it works pretty well. And now we're going to look at the posies. The posies are these weeds that come up everywhere. Um, they seem to really like growing in the leaves, the bags of leaves that we just, we steal everybody's bags of leaves, uh, when they rake them up. And then we go around in the car and we bring bags and bags and bags of leaves back and we throw them on the, you know, all the, uh, garden spots. And then when that disintegrates, you can put pine bark mulch on it if you want later, you know, toward the summer. Um, and that lasts for a long time. But it does float away in the, in the heavy rains. That's not a problem. But if you look at these um, wonderful posies, they, 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 they really give a nice ground cover. And they can be pulled out very easily. And again, you can weed eat them uh, to control them. Uh, so you don't really have to pull them out if you don't want to. But you can if you do. And if they get to be waist high, they come up really easy because the roots are very shallow. Um, so we have, uh, that kind of, it works with the roses, it works with the white plumbago, it, it, um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of neat. Um, and then we have, talk about recycle stuff, uh, an old baker's rack, and I painted it kind of a rust color, and then I used from Jill's aunt in Atlanta, who collects, you know, a marvelous art collection, uh, lives near the museum there downtown, and, um, she had, uh, all these little ceramic, you know, they're, they're, they're concrete lions that held up the big pots on her terrace and she had a bunch of them so we brought them back and kind of put those you know on the baker's rack with the flowers and uh, I thought that looked kind of nice uh, yeah, very unusual I haven't seen anybody do that and you can take this theme um, of the kind of um, ever flowering ever changing which, which happens in Florida because, you know, it becomes very colorful in the late spring and summer. Uh, once we have the azaleas that are past, we get into the crepe myrtle, we get into uh, the hibiscus, the bougainvillea, and there's so, so much color. And um, you can carry this, you know, most of the stuff here is vines. I mean, it's all over the place. And you kind of have to live with it. But bring some of it indoors. Uh, when you come into the house here, uh, look what we've got. We've got uh, a screen. <laughs> this is to keep the Great Danes from attacking people when they come in. Um, but you'll notice that it has that kind of vine-like quality, you know, very natural. And then the, the, you know, the urn at the bottom, which used to be on the facade of a church at somewhere in Ohio, um, that's on the floor. And that's only to keep the dogs from knocking over the screen. <laughs> But, um, and, and then here's a, a, a fun Chinese screen, um, probably from, um, you know, pre-World War II, but, but it's a uh, part of it. I, you know, some of the hinges fell off, you know, two of the panels, but we use that, um, but that kind of brings that garden theme into the house. And then we've also got, uh, the garden room as you go out to the garden in the back, uh, we used the lattice, and that came, that was really inexpensive. That came from a garden shop that went out of business. And I had it outdoors for a while, but of course, you know, it would disintegrate in no time. Um, so I eventually brought it in, and it just fit over the sliding door there 
and Jill hung baskets all over it, and uh, it makes kind of a nice transition uh, out to uh, the garden. And then finally here uh, is just a shot of the way we did the whole thing with the uh, concrete, um, you know, faux stone um, kind of uh, squares and laid our walkways out with those. And, oh gosh, we've had that here for, well, at least 20 years. And, um, you know, every once in a while you have to go out and level some of them and, and so forth. But, but they really hold up well. And, again, you just take your weed eater and, you know, mulch is going to move. But, you know, it, it's, it's really kind of a nice look. And so here we are living with the weeds, living with uh, all sorts of uh, free mulch uh, from the leaves and uh, things that you pick up, you know, along the way and, and even at some yard sales. And, and uh, you have a nice park-like setting. And, um, wow, I mean, it doesn't cost nearly as much as keeping up a St. Augustine lawn. Um, and... You can really kind of lean back and enjoy it and uh, uh, have fun. So out of the box um, and have fun with jumping out of it.